Hey guys, this is Sherin. I'm sure that you heard of software test metrics when you work in a project. It plays an important role in monitoring the progress of the project. So today, the session is about software test metrics. We will see what is a test metric. We will see the different types of test metrics that the project uses and we see examples as well. So let's get into what is a software test metric. Test metrics helps in estimating the progress of the testing or to measure the progress of the project. It improves efficiency and effectiveness of software testing. You know, every project has a schedule. We need to complete the work according to the defined schedule. How can we ensure that we are finishing the work on time? Or how can we ensure that we are going in the right path to finish the work on time? Software test metrics helps in these aspects. We can measure the progress of the project by using different test metrics techniques. There are different steps to be followed to identify the right set of metrics for a project. The metrics used in a project varies according to the type of the project. Let's see the different steps in identifying the test metrics of a project. The first step is identify the key areas to be measured. If the goal of the project is to complete the test execution of 1000 test cases according to the schedule, then the key areas to be measured are the test execution productivity of the resources who are working in that project. This is the second step. Set the baseline. The key area to be measured here is the test execution productivity of the resources who are working in the project. We can set the baseline as 5 test cases per resource, which means that every resource who is working in this project should give or should complete 5 test case execution in a day. If every member in the project follows this, then the goal of the project can be met, which means that we can finish the work on time. The third step is monitor the progress. The project manager or the project lead should find out the productivity per resource. If the productivity is low, then we need to find out the reasons why the productivity is going low and we need to have a plan in place to improve the productivity of test execution. So this is the fourth step. Find out areas of improvement. In our example, the reason for low productivity is the less knowledge of resource. Then we can have the improvement plan like knowledge transfer can be facilitated to the resource so that they can improve on the test execution count. So the four steps are identify the key areas to be measured, set the baseline, then monitor the progress and find out areas of improvement. Now we will get into the different types of software test metrics. The first type of metrics is process metrics, which is used to improve the process efficiency of software development lifecycle. The second type of metrics is product metrics. Product metrics are used to improve the quality of the software. The third type of metrics is project metrics. Project metrics are used to measure the efficiency of team members. We would take the third one which is project metrics and we will see the different types of metrics which are used in a project. So let's get into the project metrics. Metrics are divided into two, base metrics and calculated metrics. Base metrics is the readily available data. For example, total number of requirements or total number of test cases or number of test cases executed or total number of defects raised by a tester or total number of defects fits. So all this data is readily available. But in case of calculated metrics, we are calculating a new data with the help of a base metrics. For example, test completion status, test execution completion status, defect density, defect removal efficiency and so on. So in case of calculated metrics, the data is not readily available, but we can derive it with the help of the data in base metrics. Let's see the different calculated metrics. The first one is test completion status. In our example, our aim is to complete 1000 test cases and the schedule is 12 days. So we need to understand on a daily basis what is our test completion percentage. This can be calculated by using the formula number of test cases executed by total number of test cases into 100. 
Similarly, we can find out the percentage of test cases which are pending or not executed. And the formula for this is number of test cases not executed by total number of test cases into 100, which gives the split up of total number of test cases executed and the total number of test cases which are pending to be executed. So this would give the test completion status on a daily basis we can take this and we can understand where we stand with respect to the delivery. The second one is test execution completion status. Test execution completion status gives the information about the status of the test cases executed. This can be arrived by using the formula number of test cases passed by number of test cases executed into 100. This is for finding out the past number of test cases or past percentage of test cases. Similarly, we can find it out for the failed and block percentage. The third one is defect density. The metrics defect density helps to find out the volume of defects or the issues raised in a particular functionality or module. This can be found out by using the formula number of defects confirmed by size. The fourth one is defect removal efficiency or test effectiveness. Defect removal efficiency by using this matrix we can find out how many defects were removed during the testing and the formula number of defects found during QA testing into 100 can be used to find out defect removal efficiency. The next one is defect leakage. This matrix helps in finding out the number of defects which are leaked to the next phase which is UAT. QA team would be doing testing for system testing or integration testing but there can be chances like certain defects slips to the next phase which is UAT testing. So this matrix helps in understanding the number of defects which are leaked to the next phase. Let's get into the next one. When testers raise the defect, they assign priority and severity to the defect. So defects by priority and defects by severity can be measured. For example, if you want to get defects by high priority, then we can use the formula number of high priority defects by total number of defects into 100. This would give the percentage of high priority defects. Similarly, percentage of high severity defects can be found out by using the formula number of high severity defects by total number of defects into 100. So this formula can be applied to any severity and priority status to find out the corresponding percentage. We will discuss about the productivity metrics next. Productivity can be measured for test design and for test execution. Test case design productivity can be found out by using the formula total number of test cases designed by number of days which would give the productivity for a day and further if you want to get the productivity per resource then this should be divided by the number of resources worked in the project for example if 100 test cases are designed and the time taken for designing 100 test cases are 10 days which means that by using the formula total number of test cases designed by total number of days which is 100 by 10 gives 10 which means that in a day the total number of resources in the project has given a productive number of 10. For example if there are two resources working in a project then if you further divided this 10 by 2 resources which would give per resource 5 is the productivity. In the similar way we can find out the execution productivity as well. Earlier we have seen in our example one of the key criteria for measuring the progress of the project was the productivity of the resources. So this matrix helps in monitoring the progress of the project. The next one is defect acceptance. There can be cases like testers raise valid and invalid issues. If you want to find out the defects which are accepted by the development team then we can use the formula total number of valid defects by total number of defects raised by the tester. Similarly, we can find out the defects which are not accepted by the development team by using the formula total number of invalid defects by total number of defects raised by the tester. So in this way, we can find out the valid defect percentage and invalid defect percentage. Let's move to the next one. During the project planning phase, we find out 
what is the effort required to complete the project there can be chances like the effort which is taken to complete the project could vary from what is estimated initially so we can find out the effort variance by using the formula actual effort minus estimated effort by estimated effort into 100 this would give the percentage of effort variance we will discuss about schedule variance next schedule variance can be found out by using the formula actual number of days minus estimated number of days by estimated number of days into 100 this would give the percentage of schedule variance the next one is rework effort ratio there can be chances like testers or the project team may have to do the rework because of the change in requirements or something so the rework effort ratio can be found out by using the formula rework effort by total effort into 100 this would give the percentage of rework done by the project team the last one is requirement creep there are chances like requirement may change when the testing is in progress so in that case we may have to find out the requirement creep percentage so this can be found by using the formula number of extra requirements by total number of initial requirements into 100 so far we have seen the different calculated metrics that we use in a project to monitor the progress of the project to summarize we have discussed about test metrics today and we have seen the steps to identify the metrics we have seen the different types of metrics we discussed about base and calculated metrics and we have seen examples for calculated metrics hope this video helps everyone to understand about the test metrics that we use in a project to monitor its progress if this video helps you then please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel test talks i'll be coming up with more videos on software testing please keep an eye on it this is sharing signing off thank you